Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for today. Thank you for your law and your rules. You don't know how to live without Him. We need you every second of our life. Father, I pray that I preach your word, not my opinion, not my feelings. And uh, stay away from uh, bad analogies, please, Father. Your people need you. We need to hear from you, not from me. And I pray you would just use me to not only speak your word but to live it we can't thank you enough for another day father we need you today we need you every day we pray that you would reveal yourself so we may learn and take heed and learn to love you and learn to love others thank you again for today in jesus name i pray amen All right, let's get to it. The way of the righteous and the wicked. There are two paths we can take in life. The path of good and the path of evil. Here in Psalm 1, we will learn the difference between the blessed man who is on the good path toward God and the evil man who is on the crooked path toward his own destruction. The right path leads to life eternal. The bad path leads to eternal destruction. Which path are you on? Psalm 1, 1 through 6. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the wick, the righteous but the way of the wicked leads to destruction we're going to break that down psalm 1 1 again blessed is the man or person or woman or kid or whomever, is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. You're blessed if you do not do what these people do. What does it mean to be blessed? The word blessed? How are you doing today? I'm blessed. The word blessed means to be happy. How are you doing today? I'm happy. Why are you happy? Because I don't walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way of that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. That's why I'm happy. The Hebrew word for happy is esher, meaning how happy you will be. The Greek word is Makoros, 
meaning fortunate, or you will be well off. It kind of sounds like, well off if I do what? Well, the verse 1, it says, if you do not walk, stand, or sit in the company of evildoers. Let's move on. We're going to get there. We're going to get there, I promise you. Do you want to be blessed? In other words, do you want to be happy? Do you want happiness in your life? Who doesn't want happiness? Who wants to wake up every day being miserable? I don't. Then you must not walk, stand, or sit in the company of mockers. What does it mean when it says, the one who? Who is the author referring to? Well, quite simple. The author is referring to anyone. Anyone. Not based off of race, culture, gender, age, occupation, nothing. Anyone who heeds to his advice. Happy are you if you take my advice. You see, a lot of people listen to advice but they don't apply it in their own life. You see, I know the right thing to do, but I don't do it. As James says, that's like looking in the mirror and forgetting what you look like. Do what you know. How do I know you understand that? Because you do what you understand, and you do not do what you don't understand. You cannot do what you <laughs> what you understand too, but what you practice, do what you preach. Practice what you preach. Will you be the one who heeds to this teaching? Not just the Bible, of course, I'm teaching the Bible. Will you apply it in your own life? If you do, you will be very happy. What does it mean when it says to not walk in step with the wicked? That could be translated in multiple different things, but we want the true interpretation. Okay, I'm not going to put my interpretation in it and make it see, seem like what I want it to seem like. That's not how you read the Bible. That's not how to study the Bible, and that's not even the truth. I'm, tr I'm trying to find out what the author meant. By pulling out these words and, and, and finding out what they really mean. The NLT version says, Oh, the joys, instead of oh, how happy or how blessed. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take their advice. It could also mean, like I said, not to take their advice. Not to go in the same direction that they're going. Every day, people are giving bad advice to people. Now, I'm going to say that again. Every day, people are giving bad advice to people. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter your age or your race or occupation. Every day you can are susceptible to receiving bad advice. And it says here, blessed are you if you don't take that advice. If you know the difference between good advice and bad advice. And so you wonder why this world is going in the direction that it is. It's because people are listening to bad advice. Hey, let's go riot. Hey, let's go do this. Hey, let's go. Uh, I don't think so. I don't want to do that because that's not good advice. That's bad advice. The Hebrew word for follow is davak, meaning to cling to, cleave to, stay with. Be joined 
together. The Greek word for follow is katakolutheo, katakolutheo, meaning to follow after or to pursue. People are pursuing things whether they know it or not. When they turn on the television, when they Google something, when they go on YouTube and watch a video, when they read a book, when they sit down and listen to someone talk. There's information flowing everywhere. And what you focus on is what's feeding you. The Hebrew word for advice is utz, meaning to get information from or be informed by. The Greek word for advice is noma, meaning knowledge, thought, opinion, or view perspective, right? That's what they say. If your source of information is the television, if your source of information is video games, if your source of information is, I don't know, this person, then do not be surprised if you start behaving in a manner that they behave. Do not be surprised if your life turns out to be like their life. Do, me, do not be surprised if you're fearful of the information you're getting from the television because they're telling you all these things. Some of it could be true, but we don't know how much of it is. And so we wonder why there's all these issues in the world. Have you ever believed a lie? People hating each other because, because where they're, if they're getting their source of information is telling them to hate each other. Do you walk in the same direction with evil people? Do you pursue the things that evil people pursue? Now I'm going to dive into this a little bit. You can have evil desires. You can have evil desires. That's the same thing as pursuing evil and being in step with them. What is a good desire? A good desire is to uh, be responsible, right? Such as take care of your family. And a not so good desire is to be irresponsible and to spend your money not taking care of your family, but doing what you want to do. Do you listen to bad advice from bad people? We're all, we all have our bad days. We're not perfect. However, do not take bad advice from somebody <laughs> whose life pattern <laughs> In maybe this specific area is not so good. You see, if I want to learn about how to have a successful marriage, I'm going to go to people who have successful marriages. I'm going to take advice from them, right? If I want to become a really good pastor and preacher, I'm going to put myself under the uh, in the seat to these great pastors and preachers, right? If you want to be a good father, I'm going to put myself under the the authority of people who are great fathers. But if you want a terrible example of what a father is, you're going to put yourself around terrible and a terrible example of fathers, people who are fathers or are not being good fathers. And so that's what it means to heed advice from uh, and walk in step with them is you're taking their advice. I'm like, People trying to give me advice all the time. And I'm thinking to myself, like, your marriage is crap. I don't want anything to do with your marriage. I'm not going to take any advice from you on how to be married. There's teachers everywhere. You can Google teachers and how to have a better marriage. And good advice always works out, right? 
If I told you to do something, you did it, and it worked out for you, praise God, amen, that's true. But if I gave you bad advice, and it did not work out for you, that gives you great evidence to not trust me. And there's a lot of people who are untrustworthy, and they don't know what they're talking about, and so when you take their advice, it doesn't work out. And then you end up pissed off about the person you took the advice from. <laughs> it's not funny, it's horrible. And that's why this world looks like the way it is. You're taking bad advice from people. Or like how happy you will be if you stop taking bad advice from people whose <laughs> who's pattern in life looks miserable. What does it mean when it says to stand in the way that sinners take? It means to stand around where they hang out at. Where do they hang out at? Well, they hang out at lots of different places. They hang out at bars, nightclubs, drug dealers' house, brothels, strip clubs, casinos, gangs. And if you don't know, we're going to go on a little further. The Hebrew word for stand is yatsav, meaning to place, set, station oneself, stand still. Present oneself or stand with someone. The Greek word for stand is, um, I'm trying to pronounce this, hitsame, to stand by or near in the presence of others. It says, blessed are you if you don't stand by these people with these lifestyles. They have this lifestyle and they're probably pretending that it's great, or they probably had a good time last night. I don't know. And they're and they're and they're boasting, and and you listen, and you go, "Is it really great? What you're telling me? Is it really amazing? You want me to join in with you? They they usually want you to join in with their bad behavior. You know, you should go with us. You should go do this with us. And it says, "Blessed are you if you don't." You're don't go with them. You don't take their advice. You don't even stand in their presence to even listen to it. I don't listen to a lot of things in the media because it's just so negative. I don't want to listen to that. It's all this negative stuff. Don't get me wrong. I need to hear the truth when things are going on, the facts. But when you turn on the television or you go on YouTube, it's just all this negativity that's not just, it's not facts. It's not just to inform me, oh, this is going on. Like, here's a tree. I wish that's what the media was like, or Facebook is like, oh, there's a tree. That's a fact, you know? Oh, here's a pulpit, right? Oh, I'm a black man. You see? Those are facts. That's all I need to hear. I don't need to hear, oh, he did this, and he did that, and the way he, you know, like, <laughs> they're exaggerating all this stuff. That's bad. <laughs> Blessed are you if you don't listen to those, listen to that stuff, man. Or stand in the presence of that. Do you stand or wait around where evil people gather? Why are these people evil? Because their intentions are evil. Their desires are evil. Do you stand around and hang out with them? Now I'm not talking about you think you're better than them. What I'm saying is do you entertain them? In their conduct. You see, children, what they do when they want attention is they'll act like a fool. Do you entertain their foolishness? Because if you look and you listen and you entertain them and you acknowledge them, you're saying, what you're doing is acceptable. You laugh with them when they're doing foolish things. What you're doing is acceptable. That's what you're saying. Do you stand around entertaining them? I don't. I don't even look in that direction because it is not acceptable. According to the Bible, it says, happy are you if you don't entertain these kinds of people. And not even supporting their bad decisions. Hey man, what do you think I should do? Do you think I should do this bad decision? No. You see, people want friends so much, they'll do anything, including 
sin against God and break the law to be liked. To be liked. I want you to accept me, so I want to show you how bad I am. Because apparently, it's something to brag about, being bad. You can go be bad over there, because I'm not going to be bad. Happy am I who's not bad and doing bad things, because in the end, I'm going to feel guilty, I'm going to feel angry, I'm going to feel ashamed, and then I'm going to blame you. Now, you can go do that over there. What does it mean when it says, the way that sinners take? What way are they taking? The Hebrew word for way is dere, meaning to journey, or having a manner, or going in a direction, or path, or simply a habit. It's a course of life. It's a moral character. It's the way you live. Blessed are you if you do not tag along or participate alongside these people's behavior, their course of life, their path, their direction, their habit, their manner, and journey with them. Blessed are you if you don't have those desires that they have. Have those behaviors that they have. Walk in that direction that they walk. The Greek word for way is poria, meaning to journey with someone. Blessed are you if you don't journey with them in the way that they're going, in what they do. Head in the same direction. Are you going in the way that sinners take? Walking in a manner or behavior that they walk? Or participating in their way of life? Happy is the person who does not journey with people who are headed in a sinner's direction. Sinners, which is referring to people who have bad motives, they're headed in a direction. They have, they're headed in that direction because of their, their desires to head in that direction. Right? I desire to be faithful to my wife. You don't desire to be faithful to your wife. I don't approve your way of living. doesn't mean I hate you. It doesn't mean I can't talk with you. It just means I don't approve of the way you're living. And it's something I find to be ashamed of. You, you're boasting in it and like, yeah, man, it's so, look at me, I, 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 I can cheat on my wife or whatever. Look at me, I can curse and that's not to be honored. I'm not honoring someone who curses. I'm not going to glorify them and lift them up and say, yeah, man, you're so bad, you know, you curse and no one cares. And No. <laughs> Maybe when I was a kid, maybe when I was immature, but as I get older and I want to please God and I want to live morally, right, and be an example to my kids and the example of the world, I'm not going to entertain, neither am I going to go with you to go entertain your sin. If you have a family, you should be taking care of your family. I'm not going to go do things with you when you have a family to take care of. That is more priority than doing anything else that you think you need to do. What does it mean when it says sinner? A sinner is someone who transgresses against a divine law by committing immoral acts. Wrongdoer. Someone who's an offender or a criminal. Someone who trespasses like, against your property. The Hebrew word for sinner is hata, meaning exposed to condemnation. Guilty people who go around looking to offend others. Or people who have offended others. A trespassing. This is a heavy one, man. And this is, I don't want to spend too much time on this because I got a whole lot to keep going through. If you want to have good marriages, if you want to have good friendships, if you want to have a successful business, if you want to have a successful home, if you want to have good relationships with people, you have to learn how to respect people's boundaries. 
So all this stuff going on in the world is because people don't know how to respect people's boundaries. And so they're mistreating each other. And they don't care or are aware of it. Or they're not changing their behavior. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If you're sorry, then stop doing what you know offends me. Paul writes, he says, if, I, if my brother is offended if I eat meat, I will never eat meat again. Never. The other day, my wife got upset at me over, over this thing. I'm not going to describe what it is. Long story short, she said, this offends me. And I'd say, this offends you? And she said, yes. And I said, I'm never going to do that again. I'm never going to do that again. Because I don't want to offend you. I want to keep this relationship going. And that's more valuable than me enjoying this. And so that's what love is. Love does. Not just talks. Love does. If you love someone, you will do what they ask them to do. They ask you to do. A lot of people are not doing that. And so a lot of people have issues with people because they don't want to respect their boundaries. I have boundaries. My wife has boundaries. My neighbor has boundaries. My boss has boundaries. Everyone has boundaries. The way we show we love someone is we respect their boundaries and we do not do or do what they ask. If they say, don't do this, don't do it. It offends them. If they say, this is what I would like you to do, then do it. But people in this world don't know why their marriages fail, or relationships fail, their even business fails, and all these situations happening because they don't know how to respect people. All this stuff going on in the world. My feelings are hurt because he did this. My feelings are hurt because she did this. My feelings are hurt. My feelings are hurt. And I'm sitting here just like, what did you learn about this person? Well, they, they don't like this. Well, don't do it then when they're around. Don't do it to them anymore. Stop what you're doing. You're offending them. I had to end relationships because people... I'd tell him what offends me. And he would not change or she would not change. And I'm like, you don't care. I'm not casting my pearls before swine anymore. That's foolish. When you continually tell someone this offends you and they don't change and you constantly just let them treat you however they want. No. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Greek word for sinner is ophaletas, meaning someone who owes another, a debtor, someone who has not made amends with someone whom he or she has injured, or someone who owes God, whom God can demand punishment as something due. What do you owe? You owe someone something? Have you offended them? Don't just say, I'm sorry. That's the first step. Change your behavior. Don't just sin. I'm sorry. Grace is not a license to sin. Let me say that again. Grace is not a license to sin. Let me say that again. Grace is not a license to sin. Just because you have a license to drive does not mean you can drive however you want and speed. It is not a license to sin. It's actually permission to do the right thing. You say, I have this. I know better. So if I get pulled over, then I should be punished because I, this says that I know better. That's all it does. And I will obey. Just like when I signed that marriage certificate, when I looked at my wife in the face and said, I do, I will obey you. How happy you will be if you do not trespass against people. 
you find out their boundaries. What are your boundaries? What do you like? That's when you get to know someone, right? Oh, you don't like that? Well, okay, I won't do that. Okay, you don't like this? Okay, I won't do... Or you like this? Okay, I will do this. You see, and you learn and you build relationship. And God is the same way. God is the same way. He says, stop trespassing against me. You wonder why churches fail? Because they're trespassing against God. And God's like, oh, you don't get it yet? Okay, and then you start to experience it with people in a, in a church and they got, they keep trespassing and, and stepping over each other's boundaries and not respecting each other. Oh, because it's grace, because it's grace. And forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. That's an excuse because you don't want to change. So you lean on that grace card. That grace card's not going to get you very far. You need to change your behavior. And if you're the leader, you need to be the example. When my kids go straight into the fridge, I'm like, what are you doing? You know the rules in the house? My house has rules. I have rules. My wife has rules. We all have rules. What are you doing? You know this makes me mad. You know this upsets me. Yeah. <laughs> all right. You want to break the rules? Break them over there. Grace, we have grace. Yeah, we do, but it doesn't give us a permission to sin. What does it mean when it says to not sit in the company of mockers? Sitting in the company of people who make fun of others or someone, or to be friends with people who are always putting people down. The Hebrew word for company is kahel, which means assembly, company, congregation, council. The Greek word for company is sunner komi. I'm not going to pronounce that again. To come together, company, resort, come with, associate with, assemble with. Do you assemble with people who put people down? Do you join in with people who laugh at people's misery? That's what it means to assemble with mockers. Mockers are always laughing at people's misfortune. The Greek word for mocker is epiktas, epiktas, which means scoffer. Listen closely. False teacher. A mocker is a false teacher. People who put people down. People who are sarcastic all the time. <sighs> Do you still, I'm sorry. Do you sit in the company of people who make fun of others? Are you constantly putting yourself in the company of those people? The Greek word for mocker is a bad teacher, is a false teacher. whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. Now we're not talking about these sinful people anymore. We're talking about people who are blessed in God. People who obey his word. The blessed people who stay in his word. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. What does it mean when it says delight in the law of the Lord? It means to find great pleasure, being glad or having joy, to adore, relish, savor, or affection with someone or something. Raise your hand if you love sex. Raise your hand if you love money. 
raise your hand if you love, I don't know, whatever your talents or gifts or hobbies are. Raise your hand if you love to laugh. I'm, gonna, I'm getting to the point, and the point is this. It says, those are great pleasures, right? Laughing, you know, having money can be pretty good. You can do a lot of things, you know. Uh, being popular and all that stuff. There's all these kind of pleasures in the world, right? Food can be pleasurable. But it says, blessed is someone who finds pleasure in God's word. You're blessed. I like sex. But this, the Bible, it surpasses every pleasure in this entire world. And I've been doing a lot of things in this world before I met God, which were not good, but I found a lot of pleasure in it. But when I found the Lord and when I found his word, it is it brings me the greatest pleasure in the world to open up this Read it, learn it, study it, apply it. Happy are those who find great pleasure in God's word. What does it mean when it says meditates? To meditate means to contemplate, to think about, to chew over, to ponder, to reflect. Be lost in thought of thinking about God's word. The Hebrew word for meditates is hagah, meaning to utter, to speak. We love it so much we, we can't stop talking about it. Even study it. The Greek word for meditate is li li mili ya o. To care for, attend to, carefully, practice. Carefully. I attend to it. Almost like a baby. Right? Blessed are you if you meditate on it. His word, happy are those who do it. And most happy are those who apply it. It brings me great pleasure to read the Bible, to study it. But to see it in action, amazing. What does it mean when it says law? He meditates on his law. What's his law? His laws are right here. And they're even written on our hearts. And to line this up with this is to find the truth. Because they fit. The definition of law means rule, principle, regulation, instruction, guideline, direction. The Hebrew word for law is mishpats. The act of deciding a measure of something. A custom. right? A manner. A plan. An order, a judgment, a right, justice, ordinances. The Greek word for law is nomos. Anything established. I establish this as a law. When you play board games, there's all kinds of different rules to different board games, right? It's a law. A precept approved by God. A custom or observance of rule. I observe the rule. I observe the speed limit. I know the law. Blessed are those who delight in God's law. Right here. Right here, too. Hmm. Happy are those who instruct their lives according to the Bible's decrees, laws, statutes, rules, precepts, customs, instructions, guidelines, regulations, so on and so forth. Saying all the synonyms, hopefully one of them clings to you. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Oh, that's a good one. I know what that means. <laughs> what does it mean when it says day and night? Day and night, something you do all the time. Or to do religiously, habitually, habitually like a habit. I do this all the time. Not because pastoring and stuff like that. Because it's just, I did it before that. I was just, I just love God's word. I love it. It's just so good. Happy are those who are habitually 
like a habit in his word all the time. Happy are those. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. What does it mean when it says to be that person like a tree planted by streams of water? The Bible here is referring to itself as being streams of water. Okay. I got it. Let's move forward so I can go a little deeper. Trees planted near water have great health. Someone who is always in God's word is referred to a tree being planted near water. The Hebrew word for health is shalom. The Hebrew word for health is shalom, meaning completeness, peace, soundness of mind. Welfare, safety, I feel safe, I feel at peace, I have a sound mind, my welfare of living is good. That is what it means to be prosper, to prosper or have prosperity, to flourish, to be thriving in a condition, to be quiet to be tranquil, to be at rest, or still pleasant. The Greek word for health is hugiaino, meaning to be sound, to be well, wholesome, or have true doctrine. How are you doing today? I am complete. I have peace. My mind is sound. The welfare of my life is good. I feel safe. I am thriving and flourishing in this condition. I have rest. You ask people today, how are you doing? I'm tired. How are you doing? Ugh. How are you doing? Ugh. How are you doing? This thing irritates me. It's just so much negativity. As someone who has the true doctrine of God they have all these blessings that I just mentioned before the negativity. The world is like a storm to me. People's emotions are they're unpredictable. One second, they're fine. Next second, they're boom. They're, what happened? Those who stay planted in God's word have completeness. They thrive in any condition that the world tries to throw at them. They have rest. They feel safe, even though it looks like chaos out there. They're pleasant. They're wholesome. They have peace. That's a sign of true doctrine. They have the truth. How do you know? How do I know your religion's the right religion? I have peace. I have peace. How do I know that you're obeying God? A lot of people say I'm a Christian. A lot of people say, you know, I have the right religion. A lot of people say I know God. But you look at their behavior. You look at their life. And it's just, it's chaotic. Well, I gotta go to church and I do this now. It's like, you obviously did not understand this. <laughs> what does it mean when it says yield? To give, to supply, to provide. The Hebrew word for yield is gamal, meaning to deal out. Or to ripen, like a fruit ripens. To do good, to serve, to treat person well. The Greek word for yield is apodidome. To deliver, to give away, perform, reward, or to render. How do I know a tree is thriving? Well, it brings forth leaves. It has good bark, healthy looking, colorful bark. And most importantly, it's fruit or acorns are very healthy. When we remain in God's word, we yield good behavior. We even yield to decide to serve others and put others first. 
Serving others is not necessarily always giving something to someone, but to put people first. When you're waiting in line, oh yeah, go ahead, you can go. You're yielding them to go. Oh, no, oh, you're driving, right? You're, oh, you're good, you're good, you know, go ahead. We live in a world that does not do that. It's the opposite. It's my turn first. It's me. I was here first, you know, and all this stuff and fighting and all that stuff. But we as God's people, we're to be the peacemakers. And so we're always, no, you you go ahead. We lift others up above ourselves. We should. When we remain in God's word, I just said that. <laughs> what does it mean when it says fruit? The Hebrew word for fruit is lachem. It could mean food. Bread, meat, grain, provision. The Greek word for fruit is karpophior. To bear, bring forth, deed. What you digest is what you reflect. In other words, what you digest in your mind, what you entertain your mind with, is how you behave. If you put junk in your mind, then you act like the junk that you put in your mind. If you eat unhealthy food, you're going to feel unhealthy. If you eat healthy foods, you will feel healthy. So if you digest healthy knowledge, the word of God, then you will feel healthy spiritually. But if you digest the media, television, whatever, 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 false religions, everything I believe that's not the Bible is an unhealthy relationship, then you're going to spiritually feel like trash. You can go to the gym all you want, eat healthy foods all you want, but if you don't have true doctrine in your life, which is the word of God, then you will be spiritually unhealthy and you will treat people like trash. I meet a lot of really nice, beautiful looking people, men or women, right? Their diet is on point, right? They go to the gym every day. The way they treat people is, is not good at all. If you want to be spiritually healthy, you have to feed on the word of God. And there's only one word of God. It's called the Holy Bible. You don't just go to church and listen to the pastor preach. Yes, that's part of it. But you personally need to get in the word yourself. And not just, oh, yeah, I read chapter. I'm done. You need to really look at it. I ponder over this over, over, over again. And every time I look at this, I get something new. I'm like, I didn't even see that. <gasps> it feeds me spiritually. What are you feeding your mind? Is feeding your soul and spirit. What you put in your mind, that is your direction in life. That is your behavior. I saw this person watching TV, and he or she, what they were digesting is all they wanted to do. They sit there and watch this, and I'm watching them watch this, and I'm like, oh, that's why you act like that, because that's what you feed your mind. Don't be surprised. What does it mean when it says, whose leaf does not wither? Leaves represent a tree's health. A tree's leaves that wither is a dying tree. The Hebrew word for wither is kamal, meaning to decay, to be decaying or decayed or hewn down, cut down. The Greek word for wither is se rai no, dry up or waste away. You see, people are spiritually wasting away. They're dying spiritually, decaying, because they don't have the spiritual food that they need right here. If you only ate food once a week, you would die. You would. Because people are only eating once a week when they go to church, and sometimes they're not even able to make it to church. And they're not staying spiritually healthy and the world is taking over their life. Why is your life miserable? Because you're not reading the Bible. Is your attitude getting better or worse? People who are happy stay in God's word. And people who do not stay in God's word are perishing. What does it mean when it says whatever they do prospers? 
to flourish physically, grow strong, healthy. I want my kids to grow strong and healthy, not just physically, but spiritually. The word, the Hebrew word for prosper is tov, meaning good, better, to be merry, cheerful, bright, agreeable, kind, understanding, morally good. Think about that. Flourishing, prosper, agreeable. I meet some very unagreeable people. I meet some very unkind people. They are dying spiritually. The Greek word for prosper is yao dol, meaning succeed in business or job, succeed in marriage, succeed in friendships, and so on. But do not be deceived, because a coffin looks beautiful on the outside, and the inside of it are full of dead bones. You see, people's lives look beautiful on the outside. Oh, they got nice grass. They got a nice car. Their kids are dressed pretty nice. They got a big house. They got a nice job. But you don't know what the inside of that house looks like. You don't know the relationship on how the person treats their spouse or their kids or this and that. And you're like, on the outside, it looks healthy. Looks like you're flourishing. Looks like you're prospering. But the inside, spiritually, looks dead. Those who have planted themselves in the Word of God, the Holy Bible, will prosper. It's mostly talking about spiritually. People think, if I get rich and get famous, and da -da -da -da, I'll be happy. It's not the truth. Jim Carrey said, I wish everyone could become rich and famous. So they realize it won't bring them happiness. Not so the wicked, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. What does it mean when it says chaff that the wind blows away? Chaff is represented as litter, waste, debris, rubbish. It's represented as garbage. People who have not planted themselves in God's word and his truth are like a plastic bag blowing around on a windy day. They're trying to fit in with everybody. They don't know who they are. They've lost their identity. I'll be whatever you want me to be. Just so as long as you like me. Sorry, I'm not going to compromise my integrity to get along with you or you or a bunch of people. I know who I am and how God made me. What would you do if an apple tree started to bear oranges? It wouldn't be an apple tree anymore. It'd be confused. And so a lot of people are confused in who they are. Or a toaster. I started walking around with toasters on my feet. I'd be very confused. And so these people are very confused about who they are. So they blow around like chaff. They're over here and they're over there. They don't know who they are. People who do not stay in God's word are confused with all sorts of things. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. What does it mean when it says the wicked will not stand in the judgment? Well, good. I don't have to go to church. I don't have to read the Bible because I don't want to be judged. Well, let's pull the text apart and see what it actually means. Bad people do not like to be judged. Bad people do not like to be judged. Bad people do not like to be judged. They do not like to be corrected. Bad people do not like to be judged or do not like to be corrected for anything that they do. They don't want to be exposed for their wrong, evil behaviors. They do not put themselves near or around God's word or his truth or his church. So they'll go find other churches that feed their itchy ears. I wasn't right, right? I wasn't right, right? I wasn't right. I wasn't right, right? So I'm, I, I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong, right? Right? No, you're wrong. You're either wrong for two different things. You're either wrong for being wrong, or you're wrong because you're not forgiving them for wronging you. It's either one or the other. Okay, they've trespassed against you. I understand. But now, you're in violation because you're not forgiving them. Trust me, I've been on both sides. It's not pleasant. I, I, I was right. 
But God says you're wrong because you should forgive them and move on. Do you like to be corrected? Will you abandon your standard of truth? Or the Bible's standard of truth. Everyone has their own opinion. I get it. Trust me. I am a person. However, God wants to set His church free. He wants His church to have peace. He wants His church to feel complete and whole and to uh, be joyful and happy. And if someone has to come to me and tell me the truth, even when I don't like it, so I can have peace again. Well, please discipline me. Please correct me. Please judge me when I'm wrong. And that's what the church wants to do for you. We understand your life, but we want to help you because God wants you to have peace. God wants you to be happy. And unfortunately, if you did something wrong, you need to acknowledge that. Say I'm sorry, not just to the person, but to God. And you need to forgive yourself. Or if you're on the other side and someone wronged you, you need to forgive the other person. God wants you to have good welfare in your life. What does it mean when it says righteous? A good, virtuous, moral, law-abiding, ethical, noble-minded, blameless, God-fearing saint. The Hebrew word for righteous as sadiq, meaning just, lawful, just in government, just in one's life, just in one's cause, just in one's behavior, just in one's character, just in the eyes of God. There's all these standards in the world. Some people's houses, it's okay to smoke. Some people's houses, it's okay to walk in their house with shoes. Some people's houses, it's not okay to smoke. Probably most people. Some people's houses, it's not okay to walk around with your shoes. Some people's houses, it's okay to uh, curse. And some, hopefully most people's houses, it's not okay to curse. And so that's just one example of the rules of some people's houses. And businesses and, and countries are the same way. You walk in my house, it's not okay to do certain things. And if I walk in your house, it's not okay to do certain things. Respect the person's house. And God says, if you want to come to heaven, I have rules. If you want to go to church, there's rules. There's rules and in, in the being a Christian, there's rules in how to treat one another. And if you don't like rules, well, guess what? That's why people don't go to church, because they don't like rules. They don't like the Bible. They're like, oh, I got to do this. I don't want to do this. It's too hard. I'll just do whatever I want to do. I'll go to these other religions that, that make me, that, are, that accept me and who I am and doing whatever I want and living however I want. And they wonder why the world looks like the way it is, because they're trespassing not only against God, but against people. They don't know how to respect people anymore. They want to do whatever they want to do. Rebellious. Are you just in God's eyes? Will you abandon your own moral standard and take up the cross of his standard? He says, I am the way, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He's the truth. And the truth will set you free. What does it mean when it says sinners will take, will not be found in the assembly of the righteous, as I described earlier, to simply put your, I'm sorry, evil people will not be found in God's real Bible-believing church. They'll go find other teachers who think they are teaching the Bible, Simply because they don't want to be corrected for their actions. They'll go to the churches that are just, oh, it's all about grace, it's all about grace, it's all about grace. Oh, okay. Is it really all about grace? How do you feel when this person continually mistreats you? Now, how come you can't show grace to them? Because it hurts you. You could show grace to them a few times. But it starts to, God starts to stop sending his grace upon your life to show them grace. Why? Because now you're casting your pearls before swine. Now you're letting them take advantage of you. Jesus didn't even let his own parents or his own 
brothers and sisters or disciples take advantage of them. Don't let people walk all over you. Stand up for yourself. It's not just grace. You have to learn your lesson. Cop pulls you over. You know why I pulled you over? Because I was speeding. Okay, I'm going to let you off this time. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. And so people go to church and they hear the truth and their life is not living according to the truth and they don't, they don't want to work at it. Marriage is a work. It's work. Raising children is work. And if you don't want to be married or you don't want children, you're not going to try to work at it. You're not going to try to be a good parent. You're going to just do whatever it's too hard. Well, you should have thought about that before you became a parent. You should have thought about that before you got married. You should have thought about that before you became a Christian and got baptized. I don't want it. It's too hard. Yeah, it is hard. But you got to try. You got to keep getting up and trying again and be the best person that you could be. God doesn't want perfection. He wants progression. And a, bill, a real Bible-believing church is going to simply tell you, you know, I get it. Trust me, I'm on the same walk you're in in life. I get it. You're the one or the other. You need discipline in your life. Right? You either need to stop trespassing against people or you need to forgive those who've trespassed against you. You're either one or the other. You're either the victim or the one who's trespassing. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. If you don't heed to my advice, the word of God's advice, which I believe, then your path is on the route to destruction. What does it mean when it says the Lord watches over the way of the righteous? God watches over everyone, but God protects those who live according to his word. He understands our frailness, our temporary time here. If you can't obey God here, why would you want to go to heaven when it's all about obeying him? The Hebrew word for protect is sather, meaning he covers, shelters, keeps in a hiding place. Do you desire to have God's protection over your life? I do. <laughs> Trust me, I do. I need it. We all need it. It's amazing. I don't want to be afraid. If anything, what does it mean when it says the way of the wicked leads to destruction? Evil people who are not moving toward God are moving toward destruction. The Hebrew word for lead is to guide, transport, or to be governed by. You're leading people when you're governing over them, when you're giving them advice. The Greek word for lead is ho di o meaning give guidance or a teacher. I'm trying to lead you into a good life. God has put me here in this town, wherever he's put you. If you're a leader, he's put you there to give good advice to these people, to lead them into a prosperous, peaceful, harmonious, welfare, being life. And one or two things are happening. Either you're not teaching them the truth or they're not obeying it. You need to exercise your authority. I exercise my authority over my kids all the time. They try to trespass against my my wife and their mom. They try to trespass against me. They try to, oh, he didn't say anything about that. Maybe I didn't see it. But when I see it, I'm like, you better stop that. You better stop that. And if you don't catch the small things, then it's going to blow up into something that you never thought could happen. And it's going to be a nightmare. Evil people are walking towards destruction because their teachers are leading them there. I want my children to be successful. I'm going to discipline them. Get back on the right path. Get back on the right path. What does it mean when it says destruction? Devastation, ruin, harm, extermination. The Hebrew word for destruction is hirem, meaning accursed. A cursed thing, exterminated, broken, perished, annihilated. The Greek word for destruction is apoles, meaning eternal misery in hell. All right, here we go. Let's finish this up. I'm almost running out of time here. Last one. 
if you break the law, you need to repent of the trespass. You've trespassed against God or people. If you break the law, you need to repent. If you don't repent of your sins, when my kids break the law in the house, our rules, they feel shame. They feel guilty. And the same thing is in God's word. When we break his law, we feel shame and guilty and angry and jealous and all these things that God never wanted us to experience. And the only way to get back in right relationship with him is if we say, I'm sorry, God. That's what it means to repent. That's what repent means to say, I'm sorry. But it also means not to do it again. Did you learn your lesson when I talked to my kids? Did you learn your lesson? Yes. Then don't do it again. <clears throat> or something worse will happen. And it usually does. I told you not to do that. I told you not to do that, but you did it. And it got worse. And so people don't want to go to a church that says you're wrong. You're not living according to how God told you to live. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to be your teacher. I'm here to be your guide. Because I care about your soul. And so you people live with that guilt and that shame. And they walk around and they try to justify to all these different people. What do you think? What do you think? You're wrong. Say I'm sorry. Repent of your sins. Get healed and forgiven and don't do it again. And that's what repentance is. If we do not heed to God's instruction, we will head towards our own destruction. If we do not heed to God's instruction, we will head toward our own destruction. If we do not heed to God's instruction, we will head toward our own, our own destruction. We are choosing that path. Not God's fault, not this person's fault, not that person's fault. It's you have a choice. I have a choice. Discipline yourself. Guide, walk in the way of truth. Stop hanging out with people who are leading you away from truth. Wherever you are headed today, if you don't turn from the way from that path, you will go into eternity with. If you're headed towards God, praise the Lord. Amen. But if you're headed towards everything that I said here today, that is wrong and not the good path. Unless you turn, you will follow that path into eternity. God has a specific plan for each and every person on earth who chooses to follow his plan above their own. The Bible declares that every other path that is not God's path is leading toward eternal destruction. Every person in this world seeks to find happiness outside of God's plan, but the end, in the end, they will never find it outside of his will. So unless we turn from our own desires, turn from your own desires and desire his plan for your life. I like to do lots of things. I like to draw. I like to make movies. I like to uh, make music. I like to do all these things. But God says, that's not my plan for your life. Turn away from those idols. Turn away from them. And follow my plan for your life. I created you. Just like men and people, we create things for specific purposes. A plane is meant to fly in the air. A toaster is meant to be a toaster. Shoes are meant to be worn on your feet. How much more is God who created all things have a specific purpose for each and every one of us? True repentance means to turn from our own desires and plans. Turn away from your own plans. Turn away from your own desires because they're leading you towards destructions, destruction and turn toward the plan that God has for you. 
That is all the time we have. Let's pray. I thank you, Father, that we would desire your plans for our life above our own, the narrow door. We give up everything to seek your plan for our life. And until we do that, we will never be satisfied. We will never be happy. I find my happiness in fulfilling your will, not mine. What do you have for me today? What do you have for them today? To turn from our sin, to be disciplined, and to not use grace as a license to sin. Thank you so much for your amazing, amazing word. And I pray for them too, that they would hear you. Thank you, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen.